Hello Desert Bearhawk fans, uh, we're back in the shop with another quick video. Hopefully this will be helpful to some of the guys who are following along that might be also building the Bearhawk. Um, what we have here is the plans, a copy of the plans I made at Kinko's. And the part I'm going to be making um, at this point is this, these aluminum um, spar plates and what these are these are the actual attach fittings that attach the aircraft to the wing the fuselage to the wing and it's all done with that bolt right there there's a bolt that goes through on the front spar and there's a single bolt kind of like well here let me probably move this into the view here let's see yep right here the rear spar bolt so there's two bolts on each wing that hold it on and of course there's one out on the strut as well so there's three attach points if you will but I, I think these parts are pretty pretty critical because all of the load of the spar is going to be transmitted through this fitting and ultimately to this bolt so we want to make sure that these things are perfect 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 so as you can see here in this drawing I have this main plate and then underneath it, there's a second plate, which is this one. And you can see that it's cut out here. And uh, there is an aluminum channel when you build the spar that sits in there like so. And then the top plate sits over the top of it. So that's cut out to have relief for the eighth inch aluminum bar stock that's going to sit in here. And these plates are made out of eighth inch. So when you got an eighth inch bar stock and then this plate sitting there, this becomes a flush eighth inch thick piece. And then the top one will then sit on top of them. So this bar would be riveted in position through these holes right here that you see. Okay, so I needed to make four of these and four of the, the ones underneath um, for the main spar. Two for the left wing, two for the right wing, two for the left, two for right. Makes sense. So I needed a way to make sure that every one of these is identical to its mate. So when they're put together, this forms a perfect sandwich. Two plates on top, two plates on the bottom, and the spar web in between. So the first thing I did was I copied this a couple times and I cut out this pattern right here and I glued it and I cut it out so it ends up looking like this it's the, this is the one for the bottom okay so I cut it out and then I uh, 3M77 3M77 there you go I 3M77 that to a piece of uh, 1 inch MDF and then I cut it out and that brings us to this right here and you saw probably saw a picture of me post a picture of this yesterday so cut this out very carefully sanded it to the lines made it just absolutely perfect then I marked all the holes where all the rivets will ultimately be you can see them all here there's 14 of them or so and um, while I was doing that I designated three of those holes to be rig pin holes. So that's the beauty of what I'm about to show you is on our, and I'll grab a, walk over here and grab a, a part. On our aluminum parts that we're making for the wing, we had these quarter inch bolt holes right here for rig, rig pins. And the reason we did that is to hold, you know, hold this in place when you're, you know, when you're forming the flanges in the template or in the form blocks rather. Well, this, this part here, this spar doubler, this attach fitting, cannot have any holes in it that are just holes. It's, it is mission critical that this thing have exactly the holes it's supposed to have and exactly the spot they're supposed to be. Can't have any scratches in this aluminum, can't be damaged in any way because everything hangs on that bolt hole right there and we do not want this thing to fail. So I'm thinking, well, I can't put quarter inch hole for rig pins in here because first of all this rivet right here is not going to be a quarter inch this one's not going to be a quarter inch so you know this is going to be 3 8 so I could potentially use that as a rig pin hole and then 
oversize it or ream it the size when I'm ready to uh, ready to put the bolt through. And once I've got it all assembled, I can ream the whole thing to size. But I, I didn't like that idea, so I thought, well, how can I pin this so it uh, so I can use rig pins and not affect the holes on um, the the uh, rivet holes when I go to put it together. So I figured, well, I'm going to be drilling pilot holes, number 40 pilot holes in my plate. So why not designate three of those number 40 pilot holes as rake pin holes? So that's what I did, and they're right here. So once I drilled all the holes, I was able to take this and put it, you know, put it on top of another, you know, another piece. Imagine this being a full-size piece, you know, another piece, then line up my rake pin holes, drill it, then I bandsaw close, then I use the trim bit, and now I've got two identical parts using only the number 40 rake pin holes. So far so good. The next thing I needed to do is I needed to make this piece and this piece has to match this piece identically. So what I did is I made two of these. I, like I just told you, I made a copy of it using the, the flush trim bit and then now I've got, and, and if you'll notice my rake pin holes, I strategically picked rake pin holes that are gonna be in all both pieces because this one's got some material cut away so I couldn't put the rake pin hole up here so I picked this one and that one are rake pin holes so what I did is I took the piece that I had which is this piece right here and I because it was already raked up via those rake pin holes now this forward shape of this piece and this arc in here are identical. This side's identical. It's, a, it's an identical part. The only difference between this one and this one is there's a one inch channel cut in here and in here. So I had to cut this one inch channel right there and make it on the 90s on both sides. And I thought about for a while, how am I gonna get that perfectly straight? There's no way I'm bandsawing that straight. I don't think I can get in there with the sander properly and get it straight because I'm going to end up screwing up this edge. What to do? What to do? And then I realized if I just put a fence on there, I can use my flush trim bit. So I took this piece of aluminum, measured everything out, screwed it in place like so, and my flush trim bit rode right along that. And I had to be real careful when I got to the end here. I had a line marked so I know how far to go. And I just routed that off, did it on the same, and then I just turned this 90, routed it down here and here, and now I've got perfect one inch pockets with the nice quarter inch rounded corner. Everything is perfectly straight. And the nice part of it is, is that if we take our number 40 drill rod pieces that we get, we just cut some pieces out of the number 40 drill rod, we put the rig pin in the rig hole, and we take our little, um, Take our dikes here and tap that through, right until it gets there, and and pick up this rake pin hole here. Uh, get in there. there it goes. And finally, this rake pin hole here. And now you can see that these are they're together as one, and you can see that. I have a perfect one inch channel in here and this is this piece of my uh, square is one inch so you can see that fits in there just perfect like so I can't shove it all the way to the end because the corner is rounded but the square isn't and now I've got two master forms I will now duplicate this one by using these rake pin holes again and duplicate this one and once I do I'll have the two pieces I need to sandwich the aluminum in between and then with the aluminum I'll simply drill a number 40 rake pin hole, rake pin hole, and rake pin hole sandwich it in between there and this router around it and I will be able to make identical copies of this as many as I want. I only need four but I can make as many as I want. So just thought I'd show this to you guys if you're trying to figure out how to how to uh, mass produce or well I guess mass produce is not really the word but to produce these plates, so they're, each plate is identical to each other plate. This is the way you can do it, and you can use the 
rivet holes with rig pins to hold it all together. And um, that's how I'm going to do it. So tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, I should have all eight of these plates manufactured and ready to show you. Another thing too is I drilled all the holes for the rivets all the way through this one, but I didn't on this one because it's not really necessary. And then once I make up my four plates for each side, I will stack all four plates on here in between the two pieces with them pinned together and then I will drill, I will match drill all four plates at the same time, all four, all of these holes. So that will make a set. I will make a set for the left and a set for the right. And they will be match drilled to each other perfectly with number 40 pilot holes. That's how we do it here in the shop. Hope you guys enjoy the videos. As always, leave some comments. Uh, if you know anybody building an airplane, send them over to my page so they can, uh, they like it and uh, maybe get some tips and maybe I'll get some tips from them. So until next time, we'll see you in the shop.